Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I airbrush this basic effect on a canvas. Let's get into it right now. Okay, so what I want to do first is just uh, grab myself a bit of A4 copy paper, just regular A4 copy paper. And I'm just going to sketch out our metal tear. So you can do any, any particular shape that you like. Just keep it nice and uneven. I like to taper it off at the edges just so that it looks like it's torn open. So these bits are just where it's beginning to tear and then that's our obviously the main section. And then come in and again uneven. Just want to rough it in and then we're going to start to do these curls with broken sections and this is going to be our torn section so you can see that's peeling so you can do some smaller ones as well you can tweak it as well with your pencil just as you go along so it's a great one to do because nice and uneven is what you want there's no real rule to it. Let's have a play around. Okay, so you can see um, this curve has to have a corresponding curve on the other side. You don't want that to sort of uh, come in like this, all right? So if you're going like that, it's gotta be like that. If you're going the other way like that, then you make sure it's like that. And that bit will just taper off like so. And now we're gonna do the bottom section here. Same thing. Start off with that. And curve it out. Get close to the paper there, but that's all right. We'll just do one like this, a smaller one. Moving right along. And this one, I'm going to taper, oh, that's a bit, a bit sharper. This one will taper right down, like so. So there we have it. So we've got our initial sketch now. If you want to make numerous copies of this, by all means you can. I'm just going to use one copy and show you how to do it using one. So what we want to do now is cut out around the tear. Because this is going to become our paper template. So if I was going to do this on like a hard surface aluminium panel or or an automotive application like a Harley tank or someone's um, car bonnet or hood for all of our overseas viewers. I would then use masking tape or spray mask vinyl to achieve this and it's going to be a lot easier to do but the reason I'm showing you how to do it with paper is that you can just you know give it a go at home try it out on even some art paper as well or a canvas like I'm doing here so you can see I've ignored a bit of that grey lead so you can tweak it as you go. Now what I'm going to do is even though I would normally go right across, actually I will, what I'll do is I'll go right across like this and then come across like that. And then what we have to make sure we do is leave a gap here because I don't want this center section to totally fall out you'll see why later. I still want that to be um, sitting in there so that we've got the positive mask. And that will allow me to remove this and we'll keep this as well. So make sure your knife is nice and sharp so that you don't tear the paper. Okay, there we have the positive template. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this bit out. Now I'm going to leave another gap deliberately so that we don't lose that centre section for the moment. Now you don't have to copy this exactly. If you want to, by all means do so, but you can draw out your own version. Again, leaving that gap so don't make them meet, otherwise we're going to lose the whole centre section. Okay, almost done, and we can get into painting. Okay, we'll keep those positive templates, but you should have something that looks like that now. So you can see it's quite quite flimsy, but that's okay. I'll show you how to affix that to the canvas very, very soon. Okay, so we've got our orange base. I've done that because I want some real contrast. Now, using some spray adhesive, I'm gonna spray the back of this paper template and affix that to the canvas. So that's why I've got the extraction on at the moment while I spray this. So don't need to do a lot, just, um, just move this out of the way for the moment. So just hold it up like that and you just want to give it a couple of light sprays. You want to get enough on there so that it's just a little bit tacky once it dries. You don't want to saturate it because we don't want to leave glue either. Let's give that a minute or so to go tacky. So I'm sure any uh, spray adhesive will work. Just get one from the art shop. A good quality one's always best. That way you got less chance of leaving glue. So, and once you find a brand that you're happy with and just stick with that, at least you know how it performs. Okay, I'll line that up. So I'm just gonna lift it for the purpose of just sticking this into place. So I've gone quite big with my uh, tears, but that's okay. I just want to get them all in. You can see that's sticking on reasonably well. Can clean up some bits later on, that's fine. Again, it's more difficult to do it on this surface. So if you're really new to airbrushing, I'd probably suggest giving this a go with some masking tape or app tape or a spray mask vinyl, what I use. You can get that from a sign supply shop. Now I'm just going to mask off these sections that are still exposed. Even so, like this is a fair way away, there's still a good chance of getting overspray and we don't want that. So just using scrap bits of paper and some masking tape. Just pop that on there. Same thing down below. That's going to keep falling down. Just fold that over, I think, so that I can sit it in here properly. You can see that's wanting to move already, but that's okay. We don't have to do that much to create our effect. And if it does blur out, that's a good thing because then I'll show you how to fix my mistakes. Okay, so I want to uh, now spray in the base color for these uh, tears. And um, what I'm going to use is a light gray. Now you can use any particular color, a silver if you like, but again, I'm just trying to keep this simple. So I'm just going to use a light gray and then render it to make it look like metal. Obviously, if you've got a silver base it would look pretty cool because you're going to get that real metallic look straight off the bat. I'm just going to go lightly because it is a paper template so I don't want to go too wet too quick because then it's going to have more chance of uh, rippling up the edges and then that way once the edges start to ripple or get really saturated and wet then there's a good chance of it lifting off like it is there. So I'm just going to have to try and block this and still allow you to see where I'm going, I might actually 
turn the pressure down a little bit. It was about 35 psi, so I'm dropping that to about 25 now. And I'm just going to keep my airbrush angled straight on the surface and using my fingers to keep it in place. Like so. Coat back over this. So you can see this spray adhesive isn't really holding it into place. I really needed a flat surface and obviously because the canvas is textured it's giving me all sorts of grief but like I said if I do get any blowouts where there's overspray that's travelled I'll show you how to fix it. And if this is the first time watching one of our videos then welcome. For all of our regular viewers, welcome back. I hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time I put out new content. Okay, so just finishing that off. So I'll just let that dry off a little bit. Keep pressing these down, it's becoming a bit of a nightmare. You could also use a heavier grade paper, but the issue mainly is because of the textured uh, canvas. So a good way to fix that is you can uh, prime the canvas numerous times and that will uh, eliminate the canvas texture. However, I quite like that texture, so I'm happy to just deal with it. All right, we'll just coat over a little bit more. Seeing as we've got that orange base, it's taking a little bit more to cover. That's okay. Again, just keep following it with your finger. That's why I put a glove on. So that way you don't have to scrub your fingers once this paint dries. The reason I went with an orange base, I mean you can do this effect over any base you like. It gives it a lot more contrast. So essentially we're, um, I'm showing you sort of a torn metal or torn paint effect, let's call it that, because the orange paint is peeling off. Okay, so now I want to shade these. So again, I'm going to start here and work my way around. Hopefully you can see. I'll try and um, position my fingers so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm using a transparent black. So not straight black, just transparent black. And just putting this shadow in first. Now you can see I'm going sharper down the bottom here. And I'm going to try and resemble this below that sort of angle so that it looks like well, that metal's sort of a bit uneven in that section. And I can also run a bit of a shadow up to make it look like that's under a bit of stress. A bit of shading in here. So lighter through this section. So I'm going to do this with transparent black as well as white. Um, so let's do all the main ones first. Same thing, this, even the smaller ones, we just come in and do a bit of a shadow. Moving right along, again, simulating the shape. See how I'm running that shading along there, not just straight across. And a bit sharper down towards the bottom. And then feathering it out along the top. Starting to get a bit of shape to it already. Again, same thing. The reason I'm using the transparent black is because it's not as harsh, so I've got a little bit more control over it as well. I feel black is just too harsh. Try and avoid using straight black as much as possible. You know, even though this transparent black is pretty dark, but if I put actual black on there, you'd notice the difference. It'd be really stark in your face. 
Okay, same thing. Running with that curve. Now these aren't intended to be a photorealistic tear, it's more of a stylized look and just a cool effect that you can use on many different applications. Looks really cool if you've even got artwork in this section and then you can integrate your artwork with the tear. Maybe that's another video that I could do in the future, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing something like that. I could have some sort of creature crawling out and show you how to integrate that. Okay, almost done with these. Just a couple of little more shadows here and there. And then we'll go to the highlights. Uh, I've got to do some along here as well on this smaller section. do is bring some shading in here as well. Now we're going to switch to white. So we're going to have a bright white highlight. Get my pencil along this edge here, All right, and a uh, lighter one along here. So when I say lighter, this one's going to be sharper, this one's going to be a softer bright white highlight. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll start with the softer one, see how this white's flowing. Also add a couple here. up nice and close. We want to build this up. Little tip as well, I'll just show you something. If you haven't got the control to get that nice and sharp and you've sprayed over and it's looking a bit ugly like that, then go ahead and grab your black and um, come back over the top of it. And that way you can clean it up. Keep moving. Getting there. Like if I do something more intricate with this effect, say like I mentioned the uh, the creature ripping through, I'll do that with uh, masking on a harder surface so that you can really get to see how I do all of this properly. I thought the uh, spray adhesive would be a little bit more effective, but it's not really working that well for the canvas for this application anyway. That's alright. You just make the best of whatever it is you're working with.
almost done. And then we'll unmask this and attack that hole in the center. So I'm up nice and close, moving with my airbrush, keeping that air press down at all times and building up my white. So depending on what brand of paint you're using, white's generally the worst for tip drying. Trident white's pretty good. You can really uh, thin it out and run it like a urethane, but I'm still building it. You know, I'm not trying to hit it all in one hit and trying to get it real bright to start with and just coming in and gradually going brighter. So I'm now just going to hit some of these little edges before I unmask. So you can kind of angle the airbrush so that the air presses that down. And just finishing off at the top here. Then we can get to the best part, which is unmasking it. Let's go ahead and unmask, have a look, and then we'll attack that centre hole. Now we'll remove all this tape first. And there we have it. Okay, so looking pretty cool so far. Have to clean up a few bits, but you can see how that's really uh, already got a bit of a 3D appearance. Let's go ahead and take a closer look so you know where we're up to. Looks a bit strange without that centre section, but we'll get to that next. So just in case I decide to mask up with tape along this uh, edge here, I want to just uh, protect what I've done so far. So I'm going to use some of the Createx Wicked Transparent Base and I'm just going to seal in the canvas. This stuff is real hard wearing so it's just going to seal off all this Trident paint. You'll probably get away with not doing this but I prefer to be uh, safe rather than having any lifting off. Now what I want to do is just uh, clean up some of the overspray around these tears before I go ahead and complete this center section and do some shading, some drop shadows. So I'm going to go back to my original paper masks, the positive ones that we uh, saved. You can see we can fit them into place. So I'm going to spray them lightly with the spray adhesive. And then what I'll do is spray a bit of orange around them so that it'll clean that edge up. That's one, just let that tack off a little bit. Next one, make sure I'm spraying the right edge. So it's got to go down that way. So I'm going to spray this edge. So hopefully this sticks a bit better this time. The uh, transparent base, that wicked transparent base that I just sprayed on will probably help it stick as well because that started to flatten off some of that texture. So I'll let that one tack off while I put this one into position. And this. It's definitely sticking better. So 
it's, it's not a bad little tip then um, to use that transparent base after you've done the base colour, so whether it's orange or another colour, hit it with your transparent base and then work on top of it and you'll find that the uh, paper will stick better with that, that spray adhesive on the back. So now I'm still going to put my finger in place, you can see it's still going to want to lift up. So I'll turn the air pressure down again. It's better but it's still wanting to lift. It's okay. We've come this far. It's just working right around. Do a couple of coats. Now this Trident Orange is pretty uh, heavily pigmented so it's got reasonably good coverage so I didn't need to really go back over with a white. This will be enough just to take the edge off it. If you're using a completely transparent orange or whatever colour, base colour you decide on, then you may need to go white around the edge first. Okay, so you can see it's starting to really ripple now. So now we want to go ahead and do our drop shadows. And then I'll work on the inside part and finishing it all off. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll do some drop shadows. Okay, so we just want to be nice and light. Don't need to go too heavy. Next one. Try and simulate the shape. So what I mean by that is, you can see that's got a little point there. So I'm, you know, bringing that point out so it looks like that's lifted up off the surface, rather than just dusting around it. This is really getting bad now. Don't have much time. I might have to mask that centre section. I was hoping to just keep this positive one into place. So if you if you did this with masking tape, you could then just mask off the rest of this, and then fill in that centre section. You'd be done. But um, because of this paper template, I'm going to have to mask that off in the centre, but that's good. Just shows you another technique. All right. So don't go too heavy. Again, if you want, use your, um, you can use transparent black. I'm actually just using regular black this time because I want to use this colour straight after this to do the hole. But I can control it if you're, you know, if you're not confident then use the transparent black. You can even make it so that the intensity is a lot less, so just add less black to the uh, mix of transparent base. really fighting these paper templates but that's okay nearly finished so I'm not too concerned leave it at that and we'll remove this and you can see that's already looking more three-dimensional 
Okay, so I did spray this once more with the Wicked Transparent Base just to protect it again. And uh, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to mask off all of this so that I can spray that inner section. And I'm going to use masking tape this time. So just using that and bending it. You'll find that masking tape will curve only one way. You can see I can do that relatively easily, but I won't be able to go back up that way. I need to trim that. So you'll notice that I'm also leaving like a one mil edge of that gray exposed. So that way I can be guaranteed that um, that black is going to sit on top. It'll easily eliminate that gray, but it'll give me that clean transition. So I think it's easier to use little strips for this. That's a bit better. You can just twist it now. You could also use like a fine line tape, which would curve. The only reason I'm not using that is again, because I'm working on canvas, it's not going to stick very well. You can see it's a lot quicker if you do strips. I'm just working in that point. So it'll just tie it all together. I can do a bit of freehand as well. Okay, so that's all masked up now. Press all that down so that we don't get any overspray drifting through. All right, and I'm going to mask off the rest with some paper. Okay, just double checking all of my edges before I spray. You can see I've forgotten a little bit there. Have a little piece in here. There you go. All right, ready to rock. So, using black now, I'm just going to flat tone this. So again, this is just normal Trident black now. So opaque black, not transparent black. And I want that for this because I want that real deep black hole so that I get lots of contrast. And it's also easily sprayed over those edges and it eliminates them in in um, no time because it is opaque, which is handy. So at this stage now, this is when you could add in a creature, okay, or add in some sort of an effect in the background, whatever you like. Okay, let's go ahead now and unmask it. And then we can do the final shading on the edges, fixing any bits up. using the blade to lift up 
some of those edges. Now I'm going to do some final bits and pieces, but you can see how much cooler that looks now. So what I want to do is finish off these using the black. I'll just taper that off. We're just doing some final details freehand. Making some of those edges a bit more uneven. So you're going to do some final just shading here to distress these tears a little bit more. So you're going to get torn paper, tear it off like so, and we're going to use some of these rough edges. We're just going to line that up and just lightly dust it. So just aim for the edge and the overspray will do the rest. Like so. want to hint that that's tearing you can see that's working quite nicely taper it down a little bit more and again you can do a little bit more here just very lightly just a couple of drop shadows on here that I missed Okay, so I notice there's a little bit of a gap here where I can still see the orange or that drop shadow. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that. I'll just do it freehand. Done. Okay, so here we have the completed artwork. All the detailing. Up nice and close. 
So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next tutorial.